Uh, my name is Geert Lovink and I'm from Amsterdam at the Institute of Network Cultures. Well, there is, uh, for instance, uh, crowdfunding. Uh, yes, there is um, uh, the money you can get through uh, advertisement, uh, but uh, that will be done uh, via big aggregators like, uh, like Google. So they will only give you a very small uh, slice uh, of the pie. All these uh, solutions are, are uh, additional uh, income. Uh, they will uh, help you to realize a project, but they will not uh, give you a, a sustainable income over a longer uh, period of time. So, um, uh, so we cannot rely on them, uh, you know, if we want to overcome uh, the current uh, you know, situation of uh, mass um, precarity in uh, the creative uh, sector. We need to, to look for, for other models and this is also why I, I think um, we should stop with, uh, with this uh, ridiculous ideology of the creative industries and start to, uh, which are still based on copyrights and on the idea that um, uh, people will be able uh, to uh, earn money for, for, uh, for the work uh, they, uh, they do. In the creative sector that is, uh, is not uh, really a, a viable uh, long-term model. Uh, additional money, yes. Uh, project money, yes. Uh, but no income. Uh, for, for a larger group uh, of, uh, of creatives. Well, it was a hilarious failure uh, and it was a very, very inspiring one. It was a, a, it's kind of a, a cowboy story and um, yeah, if you, if you really dig into it, you, you, you don't believe that this, this has really uh, happened. Uh, and uh, you know it's based also on on very um, disturbing and ridiculous and somehow also childish uh, ideas of a bunch of right-wing uh, engineers who believe that uh, you know they can eliminate uh, the state and global finance and uh, and kind of run a parallel. Uh, uh, scheme to create their own gold, their digital gold, uh, on their own, uh, as a as a kind of uh, you know escapist um, uh, trajectory. And uh, th this is a pity because uh, you know the, the the discussion about money uh, sh should be. Uh, uh, held everywhere and uh, it concerns everybody, right? And, and, and not just a bunch of um, uh, right-wing um, libertarians. I think artists uh, are a part of these movements everywhere. Um, whether they uh, you know, can make um, uh, money out of it uh, and um, create sus sustainable revenue models uh, for themselves, I doubt. Uh, but uh, I think from a political, cultural perspective, yes, uh, a lot of artists have a lot of sympathies for these ideas and uh, see that they really fit uh, and feel comfortable with peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, you know, exchanges where artists well, you know, you make a drawing and, uh, uh, and I will teach you, uh, you know, how to cook or something like that. You know, the, the basic uh, exchanges uh, that, uh, that are uh, going on, yes. Uh, art uh, plays in a very, very, uh, uh, you know, productive and natural role in, uh, in such local uh, exchanges. No, I, I believe that a lot of the, the people who uh, who are into this business uh, of alternative uh, currencies, uh, you know, internet-based solutions. They usually have quite a grim uh, vision of the, of the future in which a lot of the, the current uh, structures and infra infrastructures, uh, you know, will, uh, will collapse. Uh, and whether that's you know happening slowly bit by bit or whether it's happening all of the sudden uh, is then up for the, for debate uh, 
But um, yeah, if you look, for instance, at uh, uh, the current uh, model of uh, insurance, uh, we, know, we all know that the global insurance industry uh, is, is not uh, sustainable and that, uh, yes, there are peer-to-peer uh, -peer models in which uh, smaller groups of people uh, uh, can uh, build uh, you know, insurance uh, networks uh, that uh, are as good as uh, you know, giving all your money away to traditional um, uh, insurance industries that uh, will soon uh, either collapse, uh, disappear or become unaffordable altogether.